residents at the camp had that there could be a sweep at any time, that's gone. A sense of relief today for people living at the homeless encampment along I-90 and Freya in Spokane. Just hours ago, the city of Spokane reached an agreement in a lawsuit aimed at stopping the effort to clear that camp. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Attorneys representing Jules Helping Hands, which is the organization that oversees that encampment, filed that lawsuit to remove the threat of arrests. The nonprofit organization says it is an important step now in negotiating the removal of campers who have been living at that DOT property for more than a year. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley was in federal court today for that hearing. Amanda, what does this mean for the 130 so people who are still living there? Well, this agreement means the city of Spokane won't be making an unlawful sweep to clear out the encampment, something Jules Helping Hands has wanted all along. Among the many steps it takes to transition people out of this encampment and into a better situation, there's one that Jules Helping Hands and Disability Rights Washington weren't willing to take, allowing the threat of what they call unlawful sweeps. Through September through now, there have been just constant, like a drumbeat, we're going to close you, we're going to close you, you're going to wake up one morning and we're going to sweep this place. On behalf of people living at the encampment on Washdot property, they filed a federal lawsuit in October last year. It claims forcing people out of the camp is unconstitutional and has already caused significant harm to the people staying there. This morning, the case reached a turning point. The city of Spokane agreed to not engage in efforts to shut down the Washdot encampment known as Camp Hope. I'm glad with the agreement. Julie Garcia, founder of Jules Helping Hand, says this is a big step in the right direction. I believe, one, it is a validation that our concerns are real. And secondly, that the people on that lot get a fair chance at getting housing. And that's been always the goal. Still, the nuisance and abatement process the city of Spokane and Spokane County are pursuing remains on the table. That's because the federal judge modified the temporary restraining order today. In a statement from Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward, she explains this action clears the way for the city to follow standard nuisance process through Superior Court, which requires judicial review before action is taken. She adds the next Next steps will be to work with the state to finish getting people out of the elements and restore the impacted neighborhood. Pretty exciting day though. Yeah. These are all steps Jules Helping Hands is happy to take. Now, Spokane County is also listed in this lawsuit. It is likely going to enter into a similar agreement as the city of Spokane upon commissioner approval. Now, attorneys expect to finalize the agreement with the city today and file it in federal court on Monday. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Now, our other top story is the forecast. Actually, we don't have as much snow on the ground as we thought that we would at this hour. We want to get ready, though, for the extreme cold and wind. As we head into the weekend, we want to turn now to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legoo. Hi, Jeremy. How you doing today? Oh, Whitney, <laughs> you've been waiting all day to say this, haven't you? Do we need to talk a little bit about uh, what happened? Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> let me start, and I'm going to take the wind right out of your sails, and I'm going to say, <laughs> I was wrong. Oh, no, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> uh, you know, it was snowing really hard. I actually woke up in the 5 o'clock hour to head up and ski, and I was going, yeah, this is it, as everybody expects me to do at 5 o'clock in the morning. And then temperatures, Amanda Rowley, stop laughing at me, please. <laughs> and then temperatures started to rise, and they just kept rising. Right now, we sit at 43 degrees, 43. That's enough to melt snow that didn't even fall overnight. And believe it or not, it's much harder to melt snow that's been around on the ground for a little while than it is to melt fresh snow. A lot that goes into it, but let's talk what's going on right now. Temperatures well above freezing across much of the region, but despite that, we still have some winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings because of some heavy snow still coming down over those mountain passes. But for the most part, everybody's above freezing. I was up in Deer Park a little bit earlier today. Roads were looking pretty good. Not until I got outside of Chihuahua and got up into the mountains where they snowy and icy, but even then they were starting to melt with temperatures climbing back up above freezing. Snow still coming down up high, and we are going to get another round of it. Is it going to be snowmageddon? No, it's not going to be snowmageddon. We just get a light little round, and I like this forecast model because it says 
We don't really get much until the wind picks up as we move through the day tomorrow, and that's going to be the big factor. So we're going to talk wind and a drop in temperatures, and ooh, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer for those temps. Coming up. It is deeply disturbing. Uh, uh, let me say horrific from the descriptions I've been given. I want to give my deepest condolences to Tyree Nichols family. Just moments ago, body cam video showing Memphis police officers violent confrontation with Tyree Nichols was made public. This video showing him being beaten relentlessly after a traffic stop earlier this month. He died three days later. Now tonight, the city of Memphis is preparing for possible unrest and protests. The Memphis prosecutor said it, it was important to release the video, though, even though it could lead to a very serious public reaction from the community. Now, the five officers involved in the traffic stop were fired. They now face felony charges, including second degree murder, aggravated assault and official misconduct. All five officers again have already been released on bond. They are not behind bars tonight. Lawyers for two of the former officers said their clients will plead not guilty. Meanwhile, the victim's family is going to hold a funeral for the father and FedEx worker and avid skateboarder who was killed next week. Krem 2 News is currently reviewing the footage that was just released by the Memphis Police Department. That's why we're not showing it here yet, but we will have more about it and what it reveals, plus public reaction throughout this evening. And Krem 2 is continuing our coverage tonight of a hit and run case from last Friday night. Washington State Patrol still looking for information about what happened. Tonight, we do know the name of the man who was killed one week ago. WSP says 59 year old Dwayne Coulter crashed on the Sprague on ramp to westbound I-90 and was hit by a car that didn't stop. Tonight, his family is still asking for that driver or anyone who knows anything about what happened to please come forward. Kremtu spoke with an acquaintance of Coulter's who says he was a virtual stranger, but he went out of his way to give her a meaningful gift. Because it's somebody that saw that I was having a moment where I missed someone and they took an opportunity to pay attention. So make sure and stay with us here coming up on Kremtu News at 5. What those who knew Dwayne Coulter want you to know about him. Also tonight, a Fairchild Airman Squadron rescued an injured snowmobiler who was stranded for 18 hours earlier this month near Schweitzer Mountain. According to Fairchild, it took the team of two pilots, two special mission aviators and a paramedics unit about two hours to successfully rescue that person. The snowmobiler had spent 18 hours outside. It was only 19 degrees outside. They had little access to food or water. This person who was rescued now makes it 708 people that this squadron has been able to rescue over their 50 years of operation. Investigators have discovered new evidence in the case of a five year old Fruitland boy who's been missing now for almost two years. The evidence was discovered during a search of a house where five year old Michael Vaughn was last seen. It's now been sent into a DNA lab for further testing, but results will take some time. Michael went missing back in July of 2021. A woman who lived in the home that police searched has been charged with failure to report the death of Michael Vaughn. Spring enrollment at the University of Idaho is up. The school says undergraduate enrollment increased 3.5% compared to last spring. Graduate student enrollment is down slightly. However, the overall enrollment is still up. In a news release, the school says those enrollment numbers are great news, especially after the difficult fall semester. Uh, the community, of course, continuing to mourn the deaths of four students who were killed at the start of fall break. So the university president Scott Green says our vandals are resilient and strong. I have talked to many who are even more determined to succeed after the events of the fall.